You were never alone. You were never alone. Just reach into your heart, and Allah is always there. You were never alone. You were never alone. Through sorrow and through grief, through happiness and peace. You are never alone. Assalamu alaikum wa wa barakatuh. A new episode, and it's nice to meet you again in Family Issues, our program which deals with all family problems and all family topics you tend to know about and to speak about. First, let me give you our telephones and email. We have two telephones 002 Two four eight and two four nine, and if you want our email, also it's family issues at huda dot tv. Uh, there is a proverb that says, "Early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise." But to be practical, more and pragmatic, um, every man, in in addition to uh, going to bed early and rising early and making his work in the proper time, every now and then he needs some sort of release for the tension, some sort of change. Today's topic in this episode specifically is about what's called family fun. If we are allowed to make such, an, such a definition, such a, a fact, yes, it is a fact. Family fun is a fact. It's not something, to my mind, that is a fancy. It's very necessary in my standpoint of view. And therefore, the whole episode today is about how to deal with this ministry. We have to have in, in, inside our family different ministries. And we've said in one of the episodes before the ministry of romance, this is very important between a man and his wife. Also, there is a ministry of uh, fun, where we have, to, we have to administrate, we have to uh, direct the family in a regular way in order to make some sort of renewal for the power of thinking and for the physical power of everyone in the family. Um, also, maybe it's very necessary nowadays because of this era which is full of stresses, full of wars, full of um, all types of stimulation that makes at the end of the day or at the end of the week a central nervous system of a man full of discharges, full of electricity. I, th I think if we make what's called the EEG or the electroencephalogram for a man at the end of the day, we are going to find it full of waves. These waves are uh, so high because of the stress, because of the, the, the tension and because of all the duties and loads on a man and on a woman. In contrast to the previous days where uh, most of the time people were less working, they were most of the time relaxed, uh, they do not put in their minds uh, how I'm going to gain money tomorrow, how I'm going to uh, make the certain work in, in the certain way, how I'm going to meet my boss, and so on. So, uh, therefore, in this episode, recreation, the, the, the case or the issue of recreation is very important. And uh, 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 we are going to discuss all the ways to, to do this in the few next segments of this episode. And we are going to see an important report uh, about the ideas of the people in this point, the point of recreation, the point of fun, the point of change. And you have to ask your question, a very important question in this episode. Everyone responsible for his family should ask himself, do I give my family good time, uh, good quality of time, good amount of time, good quality of time, good quantity of time? And this means that inside this time where we study with our children, we care about them, we speak with them, we have also to play with them. We have to tell them stories. We have to discuss different issues, hoping at the end, our target, our goal, is that at the end of the day, 
um, we are happy, we are relaxed, and we are ready to face and live a new day next morning. Um, I know that there are some uh, phrases in, in uh, hadith of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, that speaks about this type of recreation. Maybe I don't know them exactly, but one of them, um, I, was, I has been told that it's about uh, that you have an hour of um, worship with God. And all the time there is a worship time for God. But you can, every now and then, make some sort of a change. Uh, but putting in your mind God all the time. When you play with your children, you are aiming at God. When you are playing with your wife, yes, I say playing with my wife, because, for example, as we all have heard in so many um, um, histories about Prophet Muhammad and other uh, uh, prophets, that um, he was playing with his wife, different types of games, they were running and racing and so on. So I think in the next few segments we are going to speak in detail about this issue, family fun. Let's first have a break and continue our episode. You have questions that bother you. What about issues of concern to you? Would you like to share things on your mind with us? Are you interested in solutions based on an Islamic perspective? Please join me live in Meet Your Advisor every Friday at 9 p.m. Mecca time here on Huda TV. Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. So is it logical to say all plastic surgeries are lawful in Islam to bring or to regain beauty? It is very misleading questions. We need a very accurate and firm answers. Let us set up the rules and principles to cover all plastic surgeries in Islamic law. How Islam does legalize niqab or veil factor in our modern life? Is it fair to suggest that it is more cultural than it is Islamic? I would rather to answer these questions by just suggesting a very shocking fact about niqab. Are you ready for that? How Islam does legalize polygamy when Islam always says that respect natural instinct and natural feelings and knowing that not a single woman does accept anyone to share her in her kingdom. All what you have said is true. But is there any difference between your natural instinct and your natural desires, or maybe between your interest or what you wish to have, or maybe your interest and other interest. Is it true that anything came after the Prophet وسلم, regarding this deen to be considered as a bid'ah, innovation? It's neither this nor that. It seems very well complicated and confusing to many Muslims, but especially when it comes to the saying of the Prophet وسلم, Wa muhdathatin bid'ah, and Sayyidina Umar saying, Ni'matul bid'ah to hadhi. Let us set up the very comprehensive definition of bid'ah according to Islamic law. As everyone knows, today Arabic is considered as very important, very significant language. How can we produce the sound? the state of voicing, place of articulation, and manner of articulation. So in Arabic, the words which are written are pronounced. We will learn how to write and pronounce Arabic letters correctly in depth. Explanation, via board and presentation, with many other important factors. And we have today more than 300 million people speak Arabic language. Not only in the Middle East, but you can find a lot of people speak Arabic language in Asia, Europe, North America, and in South America. <laughs> What are you waiting for? Grab your notebook and pencil and stay tuned for Learn Arabic at Hoda TV. You are never alone. You are never alone. 
Welcome back in Family Issues. Um, as we have said, we are speaking about um, family fun today. And let me first again repeat to you our telephones. Um, as we have said, uh, our telephone is 002-02-3555-249 and 48. Again, we are speaking, as we have said, about family fun, and we say it's very necessary, very important in the family. From a psychological point of view, uh, happiness and fun is very important. It's related to biological processes in the body, um, and in specific, there are some materials secreted in the circulation and distributed and infused when you are happy, in contrast to other materials that are secreted and infused when you are uh, depressed or you are angry and so on. For example, we know in anger, uh, adrenaline is the, 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 in the, the hormone that uh, affects all the body and makes you appear in this furious uh, uh, way and you are uh, uh, full of redness and puffiness and so on. But in contrast, in the case of happiness and the case of fun, when you are happy, uh, subhanAllah, the, there are some materials that are secreted in your body like what's called endorphins and enkephalins, when they are secreted, they are secreted in two uh, times. When you are exposed to pain, for example, in operations or in accidents or so, this is or in order to um, make you feel relaxed and to lessen the degree of the pain and not to make you uh, go into what's called neurogenic shock. This is the shock due to severe pain, usually in accidents and burns and some things like this. But the other scenario is when this, these materials are secreted when you are happy. When you are happy uh, with your wife, with your children, you are making something that interests you. Even when you are with God, praying for God, this helps the secretion of endorphins and enkephalins, which are very important in this case. Um, actually, being optimistic, uh, expecting good things to happen, as this is, or as we are ordered in Islam to be optimistic and not to be pessimistic, also, scientifically speaking, those optimistic people are usually having plenty amounts of endorphins and enkephalins, and usually they are less to suffer or to be exposed to angina, the attacks, you know, the, the heart attacks, they are less exposed to this. Also, there is a study that... Um, uh, says that married people are lessly exposed or they are exposed less than bachelors for angina and such neurogenic or heart attacks. Why? And the study continues. This is an American study that says that they studied, they compared between the degree of happiness through standardized questionnaires about the quality of life, the quality of life of those living in the, the well-developed countries in Europe and in the States, and also they compared them with those living in the still developing or the less uh, educated communities. But to their astonishment, the surprise was that the, the, the amount of happiness maybe was not that different, uh, uh, if not more, even in the poor countries. The question is why? in spite of all, the, all this prosperity, all this progress, all this advance in science and in technology and in high tech and all these things, but still the amount of happiness and fun is equal. I tell you why. Because they found at the end the results of these studies and the correlations and statistical significances, you know, in these studies uh, came to the conclusion that money is not responsible for happiness. Money may share may help you to get into the state of fun and relaxation. Okay, so what is the direct, what is the most direct cause that had direct or significant correlation with happiness? The point or the variable that was having this highest degree of correlation was two things. First, family relations. And we are proud here to say that this program is family issues because they found that a person who is having a family and relating with his 
different members of the family, his sons, his uncles, his uh, uh, mother and father. This makes him more happy. This is number one. Number two, relation to God. To continue our, speak about the, our speech about this, let's first go to see the report about family fun and come back to continue our talk. So let us see it. One alone. You are never alone. Do you think that fun should be a regular part in our lives? Of course, it's the most, uh, most important thing in our lives, especially with your family. Uh, as when you are at work every to, uh, all the day, you have uh, pressures, you have some things which make you annoyed all the day. Just when you're back home, you are, need to feel fun. It's the most important thing in our family. I think absolutely. I mean, fun is a big word. I mean, maybe if you watch soccer, it's a fun. Maybe if you are drawing, it's a fun. Maybe if you go to the movie, it's a fun. And all these, uh, I mean, ways of fun can help children to grow up healthy. Maybe it will help them to socialize with other people. Fun is not only just playing a video game. Fun is a huge word that I think that you can use it uh, to fix this situation and definitely I agree 100% that fun can be a way to fix this situation. Yes, if you do it the right way, it can be very educated, I think. Uh, it can be fun to watch television, to see something and you can be educating through television. You can, always, you can also play games, um, do, fun, do funny things. Have you tried to teach or get your child out of bad mood through fun? Well, I personally don't have children yet, but uh, in many situations, in many interactions with maybe with my cousins, uh, I deal just with them sometimes when they are crying because they're trying to get something that, that we cannot give them, just trying to have more fun with them, to teach them something, maybe to tell them a story, or even to play something with them, and this is fun. I think this is very vital. In fact, when I was young, you know, I was in a school and I didn't like mathematics. But the teacher who was Italian, you know, he started making fun and teaching mathematics in a fun way. And all the class loved mathematics more than any other subject, which is a very difficult thing. You can, and definitely you need fun to get released from, you know, stress, stress, and so on. This is very important. Yes. And you can use it in teaching and your life, you know. And we have a lot of sad things now, so I mean you need it in different ways. Yes, my younger brother. He is seven years old. He is always annoyed. He is uh, nervous. So when you deal with him, you need to be just very fun with him as he wants to, someone to make him laugh, someone to watch with him his animation movies yes i my child is only three and a half months so uh, um, yeah he's not so much in a bad mood but um, definitely you can use fun for that you are never alone you are never alone as you as you have seen in this report uh, we had uh, 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 this sample of people uh, speaking about fun and its importance in life and uh, and uh, specifically the the our friend the last one was speaking not the last one the one before speaking about the teacher the italian teacher who who made uh, the mathematics uh, time uh, full of fun and from this point uh, the man started to love this to his mind boring material or boring subject Yes, it's, it's not the subject, it's not the issue, it's the way you introduce it. That makes you interested, makes you funny. Uh, so therefore, this is a very important point. I'm a man and I have a family and I'm not having so much good money. Uh, it's not necessary to go to a very expensive hotel, for example, or a cafe that is having too high prices to, to make my family members happy. It's not the point. As we have said in the last segment, it's not the point of money. It's the point of the relation between us. If you express all what's inside you to your wife or to your children, if you, as the friend, the other friend said, to play with the children, your, your kids, uh, this makes you more happy and 
more relaxed and this lessens of course this angina and these diseases. I think we have a friend from Cairo. Shireen, yes, Shireen from Cairo. Alaikum as alaykum. Alaykum How are you, Shireen? Uh, thank you, fine. Thank you. Do you have a question? Yes, please. Please go on. Thank you. I have a daughter. She's four years old. Although her name is Farah, she's not funny at all. Yeah. She always yeah. cries. I want to make her laugh. I wish she will be a funny person. How can I do that, please? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, this is a very uh, affecting question. I mean, it, uh, it, it's very um, interesting to answer such a question because she says in Arabic, the, the name of the girl is Farah, which means happiness. This is in Arabic. But in spite of this name, she feels that her daughter is not that happy. She's miserable or sad most of the time. That's, that's what I concluded from the question. And she says, how can I make her happy? It's, it's maybe the difficult and the easiest question, the most difficult and the most easy question in the same time. As I said, it's not a matter of the cost. It's a matter of how you look at your daughter. How it's very important to admire your child. Let your child read from your eyes the admiration language. This is one of the elements of the body language. I don't know, of course, what's the history of, the, of Farah. She is, she is a four years old girl. But... The point is, may, maybe there are some sort of events that happened in her life. Maybe she is not uh, fulfilling what she wants. Maybe she feels jealous from her sibs. I don't know what's the, the, the point. But in all these scenarios, the task of the mother or the father or the one who is responsible for this family is to put in his mind to make this, this child feel happy is to admire her, to build her self-concept. And this is through making her uh, find what's, what she can fulfill herself into. Is it a hobby? Is it um, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, tasks that she finds herself interested when she is doing this? Do, do you, does she want a friend to be with her, to absorb the attention from her? She's very, she's very young. She's four years old. I don't think that she's having all these tensions. Sometimes familial familial. Uh, moods. Children are like adults, are having moods. Uh, maybe the mood of the whole family is um, tuned, tuned, not to be very highly happy except in very strong events that makes a person happy. But the usual or the baseline is that she is, um, her, feature, her, her facial features are not that smiling and, and happy. But this doesn't mean that she is necessarily miserable. Anyway, uh, maybe in the, next epi- in the next segment we are going to discuss some types of um, games and hobbies that in a way or another helps the child, your child, Shireen, to be happier. Let me go back to speak about um, the responsibility, what Shireen was speaking about. This is, I should, as Shireen have done now, to search every member in the family, not by questioning, saying, are you happy or not? It's not the point. If you are a sensitive detector of the degree of feelings in your family, and this is very important for a quality family, you have to uh, observe every member in the family and see, is he is happy or not? Is he is fulfilling himself or not? This, these, these words are directed towards the responsible in the family. And the degree or the dose of fun in the family. Do you recreate? Do you change um, every day? You have something to recreate and, and, and turn the life from this serious uh, tone into some, uh, some sort of you know, uh, partitions between works just to change, to recreate? Or you don't do this? Do you have time at least to see your children or you are not having this time. And it's an advice to everyone who is not having time to spend with his children and his wife or her husband to have this time before you're not going to have any time. Life is pressing. Um, So sometimes we need, you know, to hear ourselves or to hear the others when they are complaining. Something like that happens in churches with priests when they make the confession. 
This is to ventilate, to say what's inside you. Okay? So, me as a father, or you as a mother, or anyone in the family should have an ear to the children or to other members in the family every now and then, maybe in a regular way. Let it, for example, be at the weekend. For example, every weekend, we go, for example, to a garden or to a park. And during playing, in a very normal uh, performance, not uh, in a formal way or as if we are sitting in an office, no, in the, in the park, the father sits and see or hear what everyone from the children says. And in between the words, you can get the key paragraph or the key word that indicates what your children are feeling, what are they planning, what are they thinking about, you see. And you take from these words and write down on, on the, the cards you have in order to see what you are going to do to solve these problems. Um, I think we have Hassan from, Ni- from Nigeria. Hassan, Salamu alaikum, Hassan. Wa alaikum salam, salam. Uh, what about family fun in your life, Hassan? Before you ask me a question, I want to ask you, do you have fun in your life? Fun? Yes. Yes. In, in a regular way, I mean, you, you recreate your... You are married? You are married? Yeah, I'm married. I'm married. You have children, huh? I have children, yes. What do you do in order to make them happy? Uh, well, most time, I take them out to... Uh, parks. parks. I teach them how to we eat out, maybe to fast food joints sometimes. Uh, I sometimes think travel out of the country. You have jungles in Nigeria. I think you have jungles and woods. Where what? You have woods there. I mean, your children, you take them to the woods and to the jungles and. The... Jungles, of course, of course. Yeah. We have jungles, yeah. Yes, okay. So please, yeah. go on. I take them out of the country in this country. Yeah. yeah um, the question I would like to ask is about family planning. Family? Uh, what is the Islamic point of view about uh, tight spacing? About what? About tight spacing in Islam. About tight spacing. Fact. The use of contraceptives. I can't. I can't. Please, I can't understand. The use of, the use of contraceptives. Accepting. Contraceptive time. Uh, okay. 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 I understood you. Uh, contraception. Yes, exactly. Well, well, thank you. Do you have any other question, Hassan? Okay. Uh, well, our friend Hassan from Nigeria is asking about the methods of contraception. Well, uh, about or away from religious aspect in Islam, this you can ask uh, Huda. This is a program of Ask Huda. This may, might be more suitable. But let me tell you something about the medical aspect in family issues. Um, uh, well, we are interested so much in regulating the process because, you know, healthy-wise, for the mother, for the wife, you are responsible for your wife and your children. We are in Islam, uh, of course, thinking about having more and more children. It's, it's, it's true. But, of course, we have, we, as, as civilized people and as Islam says, we have to be careful about the health of our wives and the health of our children. So, in order to have healthy children, and in order not to load the mother every now and then with pregnancy, you know, pregnancy consumes the body, consumes the, 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 uh, the energy of the mother and her health. So, in order to protect our wives, I, I myself, you know, someday, imagine myself if I was pregnant, if I was having this uh, monthly period, this is very exhausting, this is very tiring, this is very stressing. So if I was a woman, I was going to maybe think that my husband should be caring about me. So your question is very valuable, and I think contraception, uh, medical-wise and psychological-wise, sometimes, you know, our wives and we ourselves won't have children. We want to have many children to care about them and to give them love and to be happy in life. This is one of the causes of fun, of course. Uh, but in the same time, we have to be some sort, there has to be some sort of stability because over exhausting ourselves, whether physically or economically, is um, not, I think it's not the good quality of life. However, if pregnancy and delivery of children is in a regular plan, this is good. So it's not called, you know, uh, uh, 
they do not I don't I don't want to say family uh, uh, planning but it's 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 uh, the way you regulate and tabulize the the uh, this process of having children and living with them because also you have to think the, uh, of the quality of the life of every one of them to be happy I asked Hassan in the first uh, part of the question about his uh, way of making children happy and funny and he says I take them to parks and to jungles there in, in Nigeria and this is what every one of us should do I think that if you went or if you go to any place that is um, uh, natural uh, specifically when those people are when you live in a city uh, uh, a highly trafficked city where uh, every place is uh, 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 full of cars and there are jams and there are buildings you have to go to a place where the horizon is in front of you and nature the sun the the sky the ground the green grass and these things in order to feel relaxed and to ventilate and to pray to God as if there is no separation no no uh, 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 cement or no buildings between you and God um, uh, I, I also remember that the guy in the in the report was speaking about uh, uh, the some types of of changing the mood. He he described uh, toys and games and video games, and he said it's not just a video game. It's it's also to to contact to make socialization. He said the socialization between people, and therefore we are insisting on coming back as before to to make games between. The members of the family. Uh, we we in the, in the previous times were making you know like animals. Uh, my son climbs or or uh, rides on the horse. I'm the horse and he is the child and he is the one who rides me and I walk walk with him in in uh, at home and this makes him very happy. Nowadays we are not doing. We are not having time to do this even. Let us have a break and come back to complete our episode. One why righteous companions it is Islam that given us the sense of dignity I love all of them in a way that you cannot imagine that Umar ibn Khattab would say something and the Quran would come down matching what he said. والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. Just compare, compare what you did for Islam with just one of them. programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. series of programs where we look into this important topic of zakah, how to understand it, how to implement it, some of the rulings that are upon all of us, especially those who have to pay the zakah. You must understand how much in your wealth is entitled for zakah. In America, how much tax you pay if you're a doctor, for instance, and you make like three, four hundred thousand dollars. Stop looking at how much you're paying. Zakah on the wealth of an orphan is a subject by itself to the world that Islam has a solution for you. Imma ila al-jannah wa imma ila al-nar that indicates he's still Muslim. Mm -hmm. But he's at risk. He may go to hell, he may go to heaven. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the door of poverty and need for this person.
To end with this episode about family fun, we have to make an end for the controversy about is it a task, is it an important duty, is it my responsibility as a father, in addition to gaining money and to helping my children to go to school and to make them um, having their uh, any cost, any cost for their clothes, for their schooling, as I say, for their uh, uh, health. Am I responsible, in addition, to care about their happiness, about their uh, funness, about their uh, spending time in, in uh, entertainment? Yes, of course. Maybe it's more important to my mind, it's more important than money. Because money, this is, in a way or another, going to come because God is with us and we are working and this is what happens to everyone in the world. The difference is, are you going to uh, give your child something, this service, I consider it as a service. Do you, uh, do you think that you have to offer your wife the service of fun? Of course, I'm not speaking from a religious point of view, and I'm sure that our religion and all other religions, we, we were created in life in order to work, in order to worship, in order to help others, in order to donate for everyone, if we can, in order to sacrifice, but in the same time, we have to live happily. God didn't say that we have to live in a miserable way. Sadness is not the title, for example, in Islam and so on. So the point is, or the answer to the question uh, uh, that I raised in the beginning of this episode, is funness something that's important or it's a duty, it is a duty and you are responsible. And I think that God is going to ask you, did you make the life of your children happy or funny or not? Therefore, we have so many ways and I have so many suggestions. Of course, you have your own, but let me help you. Um, for example, having a walk uh, every day, not every day, every week with your child, and your wife, sometimes you have to take your wife alone. And sometimes if your mother, or if, you, if your father, if anyone you feel is having some sort of sadness or something, he wants to say something, why not? Why not to help him and take him here or there in order to let him talk? Sometimes talking itself makes you feel relaxed and put you at ease. It's a very important service. And we are responsible for this. To hear, just to hear others speaking and complaining and crying, this helps them to be happy, to reach this degree of happiness. Um, having papers, drawing, colors, having toys, having uh, even some types of games with your children, like cards or like dominoes, like things like this. This helps them to explore life and you can teach them through these games so many facts of life. Um, storytelling, to my mind, is very important, and we are going to have a whole episode, maybe the next one or the one after, about just about storytelling and its role in helping and uh, treating so many of the internal problems in life of a person. Uh, why not? Why not I take my children and my wife inside home and dance, dance together. Hold our hands together and we create something, some sort of a movement, a new movement, okay? And you know, if you do this, your, your small children are going to laugh and say, what's that? And they're going to be happy. I tried it myself to, to make children dance with the mother and the father in a, in a way or another, this makes them happy. Just something that is not regular in between times of prayers, in between times of works, in between times that are full of stress or full of concentration or seriousness, you can make some sort of release of the tension, as I say, through a different movement, a different way. Sometimes people uh, play together that game we used to play when, uh, with our fathers at homes or at cars, uh, the, the uh, soup of letters or the letter soup. Uh, for example, I start 
or the word soup. I start with a word, for example, like dog, and it ends with G. So I start with another word that starts with G, like game, for example. The next one is with E. Any change. Yesterday, my child, my, one of my sons, had a book about jokes, jokes books, you know. And he started to tell us and to read to us. Maybe not all the jokes were funny, but we laughed. And we, this gives him some sort of you know, self-confidence. He is ha- thinking that he makes us laugh and we are admiring him for bringing such, in his mind, valuable book. So this makes him happy and makes him full of uh, self-confidence. Um, um, also, uh, you can, for example, plan for a short vacation, not necessarily far away, but anyway... Moving from a place, your, your usual place or your home to a far place is very interesting and very nice. To go to another city, to another village. Even I see some people, poor people, uh, having their foods and having um, the, the, the bicycle of the child. And they go to, you know, uh, the, the island between two streets. It's full of grass. It's full of green uh, 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 grass and, and flowers and so on. They sit inside and the children play beside them and this makes them extremely happy. Therefore, I repeat again, happiness is not necessarily related or correlated to uh, the the financial condition. And nowadays we see so many of the very wealthy people inside the, the Arab or the Islamic or even the whole world, but they are not happy. They are sad. And sometimes we we find people who are committing suicide because they are depressed in some of the very wealthy and developed countries like, for example, Sweden or Norway or something like this. I think we have another friend from Nigeria who is Aida. Aisha, Aisha. Hello, Aisha. Assalamu alaikum. Aisha. How are you, Aisha? How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. I'm fine, thank you. Uh, Do you have any question, Aisha? Um, How do you... Okay. Um, I... Aisha, I hear you. Okay. I said, how do you make your children, um, how do you draw the line in trying to make them obedient and at the same time making them happy? You know, when trying to train them, at times you have to be very hard. And um, maybe how do you do it in such a way that they will be as well happy? Yeah, but let me first tell you, Aisha, before you leave us, you yourself, do you experience happiness with your children and your husband? Uh, you are married, of course, I think. Do you... Exp- do you Sorry, ma- I didn't get you. I didn't hear you. You, you uh, have any plan? Do you have any plan, weekly plan, for me- making your family uh, having fun or happiness? You yourself? No. No? No, n- no. You don't make plans. Uh, I, mean, I mean, if you go, for example, for uh, a, a walk or, uh, outside home or something, this comes haphazardly, not in a planned way. No, we don't really plan, plan it as such, but sometimes we do have outings, but it's not often. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Aisha. Uh, I, I think I understood from Aisha's question is that she's asking me how you make your children happy. <laughs> Um, and I suggested, as I'm saying now, that you have, it's a duty uh, that you have to look, for example, in the newspapers, in the uh, magazines, in the TV, in the net, to search for types of family fun. Uh, as I said, everyone has to suit himself or to have something that fits his budget. It's, it's not necessarily that you have something uh, expensive. Um, sometimes... I, I, uh, sometimes I feel that so many people, for example, let their children read Quran all the time. Quran, 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 and worshipping, worshipping, worshipping. This is good, but be careful that a human uh, spirit uh, all the time gets fed up and get bored. So you have in between to make some sort of a joke, some sort of a game, as I've said. Uh, it's, uh, you can... Look, for example, from the balcony or from uh, the window for a uh, view and have a cup of tea or having something that children, for example, like jello. Huh? They have to eat and drink or to, to live their life 
in something. Usually some people are so monotonous, so routine. Mothers make breakfast, lunch, and dinner or something like this in a regular way. But so talented mothers who are seeking for the happiness of their children every now and then search for something new. They say, why don't you have popcorn now? Why don't you have something sweet to eat? Do you want me to make, for example, um, uh, the corn flakes with milk, for example, in order to change, to have something new, uh, some sort of a sweet or a cake or something? So um, let me give you our telephone again. But, but okay, first let me have Basira from Nigeria again. I think our friends from Nigeria are so much. Hello, Basira. Salamu alaikum. Basira, tell me, do you have fun in your life? You can close the TV, please, or uh, just uh, tune it down. Do you hear me, Basira? Hello? Uh, please. Yes, I have a question. Yeah, please go on. Yes, I have a question. Yeah, please go on. You can you, you can close the TV, Basira. Basira, you, you can you can close the TV. Can you? You can you can close the TV. Can. Hello. Yes, Basira, with you. I'm 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 waiting for a question. You say we should treat our children and we make them to be happy. Yeah. But this time around, our children, if you didn't be very hard, the children will give you so much problem. Yeah. And what is your own advice on this? Yeah. And in our own country, some, some of our husbands will leave the, all the, the treatment of the children yeah. in our own hands. Yeah. yeah. And the children will not be afraid of us. Yes. Yes. So that's why I say, let me uh, seek for advice from you people so that put us on the right path in Islam. Yeah. How Islam says we should okay. train our children. Okay, thank we you, Basira. Thank you, Basira. Thank you, Basira, for your question. I've heard it, and I think time is passing out of us. Let me, in short, uh, answer the question. Basira is saying the, the same phrase that is said in all the Middle East, nearly in all the Arab and Islamic countries, that the man throws all the responsibilities on the mother at home and goes to work. How come she is going to manage her time and be happy and make consequently her children happy. My advice, no way, you, you cannot change this, uh, to, uh, this uh, rhythm of life easily, but what you can do is that you can do everything or work you, you do you regularly in a way that makes you as if you are playing, you know. Um, for example, I'm going to cook now. So I take my children and we imagine ourselves as if we are in a restaurant huh, and a hotel and we are making the dishes, making the salad. Please, uh, you are the delivery man. This is the, uh, the, uh, the one who is helping me, the cooker, the chef. Sorrow and through grief, through happiness and peace, you are never alone. So now, as you long for your past, prepare for your future, but knowing nothing's gonna last, you see, this life is but a road. A straight and narrow path to our final abode. So travel well, O oh Muslim, and paradise will be your home. And all 
always remember that you are never alone.